uh, great news that we received on Friday the 11th of November was, of course, that Table Mountain was now uh, ordained into this, this group of seven wonders of nature. And here with me this morning is Fiona Fury, who is the manager of the campaign to vote for Table Mountain. She's here to share some of these good news with us. So good to have you here. Good morning. So good to be here. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. You must be beaming from inside out wow. and sideways everywhere. Absolutely. I can't tell you how happy I am at this point. And, first how, of all, and how proud I am of South Africans for getting behind this. Yeah, I mean, first of all, yeah. congratulations to you for running Thank such you. a successful campaign. I think Thank it's you absolutely very much. wonderful. And I think Thanks what most people would like to know now that Table Mountain is one of the seven wonders of nature, mm -hmm. the new seven wonders of nature. Yeah. What does this actually mean for the country now? Well, we pushed so hard because they did a, a similar competition back in 2007 called the seven man-made wonders, the new man-made wonders. And there was a significant increase of, to tourism to all of the seven destinations. The ruins of Petra over the following two years had about an 800% increase in tourism. Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro and the Taj Mahal had a 30% increase in tourism. Wow. So it was a significant impact to the economies uh, of the seven of the towns or the cities uh, where the seven sites were. So that was our motivating factor for mm -hmm. us. We did an independent study earlier in the year. Grant Thornton is a company here in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. They do um, economic impact studies for things like the Argus, the you know the jazz festival, all of those kind of things. Yeah. And they you know estimated that we will get about a 1.4 billion rand annual boost in tourism per year. Wow. That's a lot of money coming Brilliant. into South Africa. Yeah. And the knock-on effect of that is 11,000 jobs. And when I say South Africa, I mean it because foreign tourists coming to coming to Cape Town, they estimated they only stay about two days. Mm -hmm. If they're coming on a nature tour, they will come to Cape Town, they'll see Table Mountain, they'll go to Kruger Park, they'll go up the garden route. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Cape Town that yeah. stands to benefit, it's the country that will get this 1.4 billion rand annual boost. So that was our big motivator for uh, for this campaign, and that's why we're just so very, very grateful that South Africa got on board and voted because it is to benefit all of yeah. us. Now, we actually went mm. out to try and find out exactly what South Africans mm. thought about this uh, this, this achievement uh, yes. for Table Mountain and for the country. So we got some video footage. Let's, have, let's take a look at this. I think it's amazing, absolutely amazing. I mean, it fits in so well with Cape Town being chosen design capital as well. Um, but uh, Table Mountain is... is place I've spent many years on over a long time and it's it's a it's an icon of a space so good for Cape Town. I think it's absolutely fantastic I don't care what anybody says about where the competition originated or what the background to it is Table Mountain is an extraordinary natural phenomenon absolutely love it it gives me my energy and I'm so happy for us. I think it's long overdue. I think Cape Town has been in many films recently. We've had stories from James Bond. I think it's fantastic. We are on the global map. We need to get more attention. And as a child, I used to sing to Table Mountain when I woke up in the morning. And my grand thought it was the sweetest thing ever. And she used to climb it up, uh, up Table Mountain regularly. So I think it's fantastic. So clearly a very, very proud moment for all South Africans there. But I mean, the road to actually getting here hasn't always been smooth sailing. There's been lots of challenges. There were articles in newspapers about yes. this and that. Tell me about those challenges. Well, the, the article that you are uh, alluding to, the one that came out on Friday, it was a little bit disappointing for me because I feel um, you know, people have the right to know where the money is going. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. And I think, you know, two rand an SMS was expensive. That is why we pushed so hard to get Mixit on board. <coughs> Excuse me. Mixit came on board. Mm -hmm. The last few weeks, they actually subsidized the voting. Mixit voting was 20 cents anyway. Wow. Mixit came on board in the last few weeks and said, look, we will pay for that so that everyone gets the opportunity to vote. Yeah. So the two rand, you know, the SMS, we, we didn't get a lot of SMSs going through, first of all. Yeah. Um, and we've got to realize as well that the money went, one rand went to the SMS company, mm -hmm. one rand went to or the cell phone company, uh, one rand went to the New Seven Wonders Foundation in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. If you think they've run a campaign since 2007, it's been a global campaign, yeah. a massive global campaign. Mm -hmm. The operational costs of that are phenomenal. When you donate money to charity, 50 or 60% goes into operational costs anyway, yeah. and, uh, and administrative costs, and that's where the, the two rand went. Yeah. One at, the rand end of, at the end of the day, we've got, we've got to be celebrating this because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And the amazing thing you just told me uh, just before we, we started here is that the, the fact that you actually went into schools and made a huge difference yes. with this campaign. Tell yeah. me about that. Well, for, I mean, I took over this campaign in January, and mm. uh, obviously the first thing you look at is, is strategy and who's voting and why. And the big thing for me, I wanted kids to vote. I wanted kids to feel they own this. I wanted mm. kids to feel that when they grow up, Table Mountain is a wonder of nature, and they want them to know, like, it's a wonder of nature because I voted for it. I made yes. it like that. So we went to my aunt's schools, and it, it sort of came to my attention that schools in the township, well, obviously when you already don't have internet access, uh -huh. a lot of kids don't even have email addresses, don't True. have any skills. 
So when I you know, approached the city of Cape Town, they said, well, it's, um, it's free internet access in the libraries, but it's, it's difficult for kids if you don't know how to log on, if you don't have an email address, it's difficult to go to the library, it's intimidating to go to the library, sit down at a computer if you don't know what to do. Yeah, and so, so, um, so what I did, I teamed up with a company in, in Athlone called R Labs, who are a community outreach, outreach project. Uh, we went to four different township schools every week around Cape Town with mobile computer labs. The kids came in, they sat down, they learned how to log on. We gave them, you know, whatever. You know, kids always have a, they want to be aligned with something. So either yeah. a Yahoo or a Gmail or whatever internet or email address they wanted, they were given the email address and basic computer skills. Amazing so stuff. that then they can not only vote for Table Mountain online, yeah. but now when they finish school, they can apply for a job, they've got an email address, they know how to log on, they've got Lovely. basic stuff. Lovely. So that was a big part of the campaign yeah. for us. So congratulations to you once again oh, and your you team so for this much. wonderful achievement. And congratulations thank to Cape you. Town, to South Africa, to Table Mountain, a really proudly South African moment. Right Absolutely. now we go over to Kia and you and with our traffic and weather. Stay with Expresso and SABC3.